All right, guys, now that I'm like full on into this little project, I figured I would turn the uh, uh, video on and share with you what's going on. So my good friend Homer sent over his uh, Blue Coral Sumo here. I think this is a SBDC 069 or something like that. Um, I've had it on the channel before, not this particular one. It was Bruce's, but um, Homer sent this over for me to uh, sell for him. But it was driving me nuts that the he had a sapphire crystal installed, and that's all good and everything. But uh, the bezel click, or not the bezel, the bezel click was actually really good, but the bezel alignment was actually really poor. And I've never tore apart a Sumo before. Well, I have these new uh, Seiko Pry tools in. This guy, I just used this guy, and I also have this one. And I, I promise the next bezel pop I do... Um, I'll do with one of these, but it was like, I don't know why I was doing it any other way before. Like this, and maybe it's not going to be that way with every bezel pop, um, but I'm, I'll play around. I'll do a turtle and I'll do that SKX back there um, and I'll share with you. But the leverage this has and the way this blade works, you can see it's nice tip there. Um, it, it just gets in there so good. Um, so I went on the top side and I just popped it up, no big deal. So here's the so here's the bezel. I'm gonna clean the adhesive off. Um, and like I said, the click spring and the gasket, like the bezel feel of this watch was like perfect. Best one of the best ones I've I've ever felt. But I was a little leery of peeling off the insert off the bezel. So I actually used um this is a tool in my watch toolbox it's just an old kitchen paring knife that i actually dulled up a bit it's still kind of sharp but um and if you slipped with it you would cut yourself so i'll probably actually take the edge on a little bit more but i just used the uh, tip and i went um from the like back side of the bezel and i slid it in between the bezel and the bezel insert and just slowly worked my way around trying to be careful because I, I really wasn't sure how thick this insert was the sumo i don't know if you guys have ever seen this I, I tried to find a picture of it the sumo insert is actually really thick i mean it is uh it's not like any other insert i've held before so um i don't want to say it's any stronger necessarily and you can see it's got a little damage up there um from something i'm not sure from but you won't see it when it's in the bezel so i'm going to clean up this adhesive um and i'm just going to do it by hand i'm just going to you know, kind of peel it up with my fingernail and because it's it's overall pretty clean. I'll probably do a little swab of uh, um, actually, I don't even know if I'll do alcohol because the way they anodize these and everything. So, you guys give me shit about my fingernails, but these fingernails are kicking butt right now. I try to keep them trimmed up, but for a little task like this, no tool beats the fingernail. And then uh, getting it out of here is going to be a little tricky, so I'll still be able to use my nasty fingernail that you guys like to complain about. Um, so I'll get all this cleaned up. I'm not going to do it all on video for you, but I'll get all this cleaned up, and then I'll get a, um, I'll get the bezel reinstalled, and then I will line up the bezel insert perfect with the Sumo. Then it's going to be totally set for the uh, whoever decides to buy it. So um let me clean it up and uh, i'll do that process and i'll share it with you all right guys i got it all cleaned up i actually used my swiss army knife the nail file uh, screwdriver tip thing actually fit really good in there worked way more efficient than my fingernail so just kind of peeled all off that worked really good i always have one of those in my pocket and just miscellaneous places so now I need to put the bezel back on. I need to make sure the click spring is in the proper holes. This thing, this one's got a little tension on it. It keeps wanting to pop up, so I'll just kind of hold it in place. Get this bezel. Snap back down. I don't know if I'll be able to do it with my fingers or not, but yes. Okay, so action's good. Sometimes you can't do that with your fingers. But. Okay, so now the uh, bezel's clean enough to do what I need to do. So now, thankfully, because Steven 
watched me struggle in the past with the adhesive application to the bezel insert. He sent me some very detailed instructions and pictures on how to do it. Um, so I'm going to employ Stephen's method. Stephen W., you know who you are. Thank you for sending the email. I had not forgotten. I just haven't had the opportunity to do it. So you go ahead and pull this adhesive back. And it didn't peel back um, the center part, which shouldn't really matter because we're not using the center part anyway. So, well, it's going to try to peel it now, so it doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and fold that back about halfway. And then we have to position this guy like so and try to get it in position. So it's going to be consistent all the way around. So if this fails, this is 100% Steven's fault. No, I'm just kidding. If it fails, I just peel it off and do it again, try it again. So now you can peel it the rest of the way off, and then you can get an ass. Steven, that is so much easier. <laughs> that is easier, and that was my first try, and I did it on camera. So, so thank you very much for that tip. I think I'd seen somebody else do it that way, too. I think it was... Um, Kurt from Minute Watch, and, I, and now that I'm talking about it, I do kind of remember him explaining how to do it, and I just kind of forgot, forgot the technique. So then you can just push the center bit. You can push probably either way. I'm not sure which way it would be better necessarily than the other. Get that out of the way. Okay, so now um, the adhesive is all in place. So now is kind of the one-shot deal thing. So we're going to peel the... Uh, the piece off there to reveal the adhesive part and then we're going to have to line this up perfect so you want to make sure this is you know set back so it's going to be in a good resting position and then um, and then I'm going to apply it so which um, I'm going to probably put you off to the side so I can focus on what I'm doing you might not be able to see this super good but that's not really important that you see it very good it's important that I get it right because I don't want to have to do this again on this particular watch. I don't mind doing this work, but I don't like doing the work twice on the same watch. So I'm just trying to get the... Um, yeah, this should, that's not sharp enough. I'm just trying to get the uh, backing off this adhesive now. So yeah, bear with me. I mean, you've watched this long, right? What's... Okay, so there we go. I always feel like I'm gonna peel the adhesive off, but it's never happened, so. All right, so now, I'm looking directly over it, so yeah, you're not gonna be able to see it. So sorry. Extreme concentration, maximum accuracy. Get it in position, that's your one chance. Go ahead and um, move you back over here. Sorry if I made you sick. Okay, so now I can go ahead and push it down with my fingers. That is much better. I mean, this thing was so bad, it was like half click off. Like it was um, pretty ridiculous. So it's okay to complain about the Seiko quality control guys, but there's tools and material and how to fix them. So there you go. Now, now we're dead on. Nice and accurate. Great bezel action and lines up. So now we have a pretty good lined up Sumo. Eh, it's probably not perfect guys, but it's really close. So it's much better than when it came from Seiko. I'll guarantee you that. So um, I'll probably throw this on the time grapher and we might as well just make this the for sale video for it too. So um, let me wind it up real good and I'll throw it on the time grapher and we'll right. see what it looks well, like. Well, I didn't show it on the time grapher, but it is running a touch slow. It's running about 22 seconds slow. Um, and there's a couple of nicks on it. There's like a ding there. So um, nothing crazy. I mean, you could bump it up if you wanted to. I'm not going to open it up and bump it, but... Um, and that's, I, like I said, that's just a cold wind. It could be, um, it could be totally fine on wrist. 
I've had many watches where they're um, maybe they read a little slow, but then on wrist they're fine. So I wouldn't read too much into that. Uh, Seiko's Seiko's are like taking a Seiko to the dyno or a, a Seiko. What do you call it? A Honda Civic to the dyno. Like everyone's like, yeah, they make great horsepower. You throw it on a dyno and you're just like, yeah, no, it doesn't make that much horsepower. So. Um, I kind of, I don't know, it's a weird analogy, but I kind of think like putting your Seiko on a time grapher is like taking your car to a um, a Mustang dyno where, where you're uh, expecting bigger numbers and you just don't get them. So if you guys are interested in this, uh, I'll put a, um, information down in the description for the price and how to get a hold of me and uh, you can purchase it. So there it is. Uh, anyway, it was kind of cool repairing the... Um, popping the bezel off and all that stuff so if nothing else you guys got that out of it but there's a loom shot sumo is amazing for loom well done indeed so i'll see you guys in the next video thanks homer for uh, sending this guy in for letting me play with it